about this? Well, what about this? This is gonna take a while, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and we are jumping into a Lucas Art Classic today. We're going to be playing a little game called Indiana Freaking Jones. Indiana Jones, of course, is one of the great action heroes of the 80s. And if you don't know who he is, you need to stop what you're doing right now and go check out his movies. Although I actually tell you to skip the second one. So <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, Last Crusade, amazing movies. I was never that partial to Temple of Doom. I know it has its fans, but uh, for me, it's always... I mean, my personal favorite was Last Crusade. That was the movie that, that I spent a long time watching. Nope, we don't want to pause the game. We want to actually play it. How do we, how do we start the game now? Initiate. Launch. Go. All right, here we go, Indiana Jones. All right, Jones, uh, how are you going to find that statue in all this junk? It's a medieval gargoyle. Okay, so we are playing, We. <laughs> this is just a, the intro level, actually. By the way, you can actually skip this level by pressing escape. So I'm not really gonna mention what's going on too much. I'm just gonna sort of introduce the game for a second here. Uh, I think Indiana Jones is dead, guys. He had a heart attack, a heart arrhythmia, and he passed out, injured his back on the fall. Okay, he is actually going to get up. Anyway, this is a LucasArts classic for those of you who are familiar with went back when I played, uh, what was the game with the bikers? Full Throttle. That was a LucasArts game as well. You can tell very similar styles. So back in the in the retro era, Sierra games were kind of point and click, or no, sorry, they weren't point and click. They were they were you walk around with the keyboard and you would type in text to do things. The LucasArts games took a different tact. The LucasArts games were very point and click based. Oh, and a statue got me. Oh my God, Indiana Jones is dying all over the place. <laughs> He's. Ever since he allowed me to take control of him, he has fallen twice, very precariously. hes he, I don't think he's getting up. I think I've literally killed Indiana Jones. That's like the saddest day of my life. But anyway, the LucasArts games were more point and click. And in some ways, I actually appreciate that a lot more. I mean, the Sierra games definitely have their charm. And some of the Sierra games are my favorite adventure games. But it is, there is something nice about having limited options. Because in the Sierra games, anything you could type, you could do. And it was almost too uh, free. Whereas with the, the point-and-click ones here, like LucasArts' approach, was a little more restricting, but it was in a kind of a good way. Uh-oh. Oh my god, a bookshelf fell on him! He's fallen through another ceiling! Literally, Indiana Jones started his day, I guess, I don't know, he's at the university or the school or something. He started off <laughs> in the attic, and he has, one after another, fallen several floors down. Imagine you had a professor who showed up to class one day, and was, like, severely beaten and bruised, like, hobbling, and, like, c clearly concussed. And he was like, sorry, I fell down three flights of, uh, you know, building today. Cheap Siamese idol. I guess the university just randomly stores all these things just for funsies. But now we're going to fall down the coal chute. I guarantee it. This is another fall just waiting to happen. Pretty slippery. Ah, just do it, you big coward. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Okay, well, I'll just click around. Whoa, it's a cat that scared him. And down he goes. This is making Indiana Jones look like some kind of clown. This is not the Indy I remember. The Indy I remember would never have fallen so much, unless there was a snake. He hated snakes. Uh, anyway, with these point-and-click adventures, there's, it's nice in that they kind of limit your possibilities, so it feels like you can get through the game a little more. And the big deal about this game, the thing I'm so looking forward to, is there are multiple ways to go through the game. I'm not leaving without that valuable statue. What statue? I'll take a dirty rag, though. It's a greasy old towel. I better take it. Oh, no. He's just looking at it. Um, so there's multiple ways to get through this game. You can basically use your fists. You can use your wit. Or you can use, uh, I think it's called team, is the third way. Basically, you'll have a partner in this, uh, a female partner who's kind of ambiguous uh, morally. She's sometimes good, sometimes bad. And you can actually have her help you. 
That is the thing I have been craving about adventure games since the day I first started to play. You know, I think Leisure Suit Lair was like the first adventure game I ever played as a kid. It was a highly inappropriate game for a child. But the thing I love about adventure games is they give you this great world to explore. It's reminiscent of the old Star Trek Hollow novels where you go into this world and you kind of, kind of do whatever you want. And when you play through a Sierra game for the first time, and most LucasArts games, it kind of feels like there's lots of possibilities of what you could do. And you happen to find solutions to certain puzzles, and you get through it and progress the game. But if you replay the game, you realize how much of a linear track you were on, where a lot of your quote-unquote decisions didn't really matter. I love that this game, although the storyline is pretty linear, ultimately it had to be given the era, I love the fact that it's going to allow us to choose how we want to solve certain puzzles. So do you see Indy as a fighter? Do you see him as a lover? Do you see him as, you know, outwitting his opponents? However you see Indy, you can play Indy that way. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, what are you waiting for? Let's open it. Let's actually jump into the story here and try and figure out what Indiana Jones is doing. So this is the Fate of Atlantis, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. So it's going to have something to do with Atlantis. Atlantis. Now, interestingly, most Indiana Jones movies start off with him exploring a completely unrelated adventure. He's just wrapping up some previous adventure. And so if you watch any indie movie, usually the first 10 or 15, 20 minutes has nothing to do with the eventual plot. So I feel like that's kind of what's going on right here. I've been double crossed by someone. I got a statue out of a coal room in the university where all the valuable statues are obviously kept in universities. That's why coal rooms are always locked up. Uh... Do, in fact, do universities even power themselves by coal anymore? Oh, look at that! He's attacking! Okay, now we, we actually have to fight. Oh, we're tussling on the ground. It's an Indiana Jones-style brawl. Oh, and <laughs> he ripped the jacket off the guy. Imagine fleeing with such ferocity that somebody literally ripped your clothes off as you left. And that was like a, a vicious tear by Indy there. Hey, what's this? Um, Klaus Kana, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some kind of agent from the Third Reich classic Indiana Jones. We're going to be fighting some Nazis. This is another reason why I didn't really like the second movie as much. There were enough Nazis. Indiana Jones has to fight Nazis. It's what he does. I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. Uh, I can't place the style. But it's old. So I found a statue. I showed it to this guy. I said it was a fake, but the truth is it probably was real, and he's gotten away with it. Um, cat copy of National Archaeology. Uh, so that's the woman I'm going to be working with. I, I'm terrible with paying attention to plots of these games, so um, we'll see. Hopefully you've been reading reading as, as I've been talking. But Sophia, she's the one who's going to be helping us. I guess she was an archaeologist who quit the biz and decided to become a psychic. So, I mean, I don't think that's a normal career trajectory for a respected archaeologist. But, hey, I mean, somebody's got to be the psychics. You know, is it... How do you even make a living being a psychic? Can, can we just talk about this for two seconds? At the corner, at, at the end of my street, um, where I used to live, there was a, a psychic. Oh, he's switching into his uh, suit decor, and he's got a variety of costumes. He's going to go out and, uh, I don't know, solve his mystery. Anyway, there was a, a psychic that was just at the end of the road of where I used to live. Um, and a psychic store, in fact. And I never, ever, my, my in the years that I lived there, saw anyone go in... And it, it always said open. Ooh, we get the Indiana Jones map. And uh, I, I just wonder, like, who, how did that psychic bring in enough money to pay her rent? I assume it's a her. It could be a he. His or her rent. And it just makes me think that that psychic place was totally a front for drugs or the mob or something like that. Like, seriously, how, how do psychics stay in business? Like, is there enough demand for them? It seems like nobody goes to psychics anymore. Anyway. Let's use a phone booth for some reason. Okay, we're just staying. <laughs> Indiana Jones doesn't understand the concept of using a phone booth. He just goes and stands in it. Uh, okay, oh, can we look at? I like how it highlights the action that we need when we... It's today's newspaper, when we hover over things. Oh, so I can click use and click on the phone. Ah, even more handy than I would have thought. I can't make a call. I'm out of nickels. <laughs> Imagine walking into a phone booth and then being like, oh yeah, I can't make a phone call. I uh, don't have any money. Okay, so we're supposed to go meet Sophia here tonight. So let's, let's go ahead. Let's actually do this. Let's open the door here. The doors are locked, sir. Uh, talk to? 
talk to this dude, see if he'll let us in. Uh, the show's sold out, sir. Hmm, obstacle number one. Uh, now wait! And no seats, no standing room, no exceptions. Aw, oh, man. Okay, can we, can we walk in this direction? Does anything, anything come of this? Nope. It's a very quiet street. I guess everyone's in enjoying the show. Let's head back here and see if we can sneak in. Because if there's one thing that I've learned about Indiana Jones, he does not take no for an answer. So let's go ahead and open this door. Now, there's a couple ways in, as I said. Oh, here comes a dude. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. Now, apparently we can talk our way through this if we want. So we can use wit. There's also another way we can find a sneakier way in if I go searching through these boxes. I actually want to figure out how to fight this guy because I need practice fighting. I've never done it before. Let me in, you Darwinian nightmare. He won't even understand that word. I'm going to mock him and he's not even going to know what it means. It'll just make him angrier. Was that an insult? What do you think? Indiana Jones is getting ready to... Uh, he's flexing his knuckles as he talks. This guy was having a lovely evening guarding the door. I think you better apologize. And some dick just shows up and starts calling him names. Uh, some very handsome, uh, very handsome dude too. Indy is not, not, not this guy. Okay, I don't have anything to apologize for. Why should I? You fat tub of lard. I've never heard Indy call anyone a fat tub of lard. Just for the record, it sounds a little uh, low brow for Indiana Jones. That's a wise guy. Put up your dukes. All right, here we go. Uh, how do I? No, 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 wait. Oh, I think he beat me up. He beat up Indiana Jones. Wait, I'm just moving the cursor. Damn it. That'll learn ya. Apparently, we can fight him as many times as we want. And, uh... <laughs> I'm just, like, passed out in the on the, in the alley for a couple of minutes there. Phew, lucky that was a Nazi spy or I'd be dead. Yeah, so in later in the game, if we lose a fight to a Nazi, we're literally dead. So this is the time to practice your fighting skills. Okay, apparently we have to turn on keyboard fighting with F. Keyboard fighting is on. All right, time to give this guy a whooping. I've literally beaten up hordes of Nazis, my friend. If you watch the movies, Indiana Jones has this like awesome backhanded like bitch slap where he can like literally knock a Nazi off a horse with it. I'm gonna lose to some like oversized bouncer. Wait, I'm sorry, I offended you. Excuse me, sorry to bother you. Let's see what he says to that, how insulting. Wait! Wait! <laughs> okay, let's open the door again. Imagine you're this guy, and some guy literally keeps opening the door, and you're like, what the hell, man? I told you to beat it. I already beat you up once. And I I'm just too damn persistent. Wait, I'm sorry, I offended you. Let's see what he says to that. Oh. In that case, what do you want? Now let's call him a fat tub of lard. <laughs> Let me in, you Darwinian nightmare. <laughs> I'm just... He's like, what? You already said that to me. You can't apologize to a vegetable. Oh, that's, that's, I'm insulting him. I'm telling him what's going to happen after I'm done fighting him. I'm literally going to beat him to a bloody pulp. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like taking sock after sock to the face. Imagine like the ushers are in there like, what happened to Bill? And like cuts to him in the alley, literally getting punched repeatedly he's taken like 20 punches to the face they're gonna find him like beaten to a bloody pulp dragged behind one of these boxes and be like oh my god somebody call the police he's he's really hurt like severely injured he's gonna have brain damage you know i just wanted to come see my friend i just didn't want to pay the ticket price <laughs> all right there she is so can we what can we just walk on stage Hold on, you must be the new doorman. Uh, about time you got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I want a reading. I need to talk to the so-called psychic. What is she giving a presentation on, I wonder? It's Madame Sophia to employees, fella. Okay, let's go ahead. If we've learned anything from our years of playing Sierra, or, yeah, Sierra games... It's that you definitely need to be saving in these adventure games. Let's just walk over here. Let's just walk on stage, uh, man. Okay, th this this wiry old man won't let us. I wonder if we can beat him up. Oh, here we go. 
Here, my friends, is Atlantis, as it might have appeared in its heyday. So it's really just an artist's rendition. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically... How do you know? Nobody's ever found Atlantis. This is literally just someone, like, drawing their fantasy. They're like, yeah, Atlantis, it had ships. It had literally jets. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. What? I... See, now this is why people don't take psychics and pseudoscience seriously. It's because they literally are making stuff up. Uh, divide into three circular parts. Okay, we're going to let her sort of talk her jibber-jabber for a while. Indiana Jones doesn't believe in all this superstition junk. Well, in the world of Indiana Jones, superstition stuff is actually real. Uh, look at National Archaeology. Can I, I just read my magazine behind stage here? Uh, let's talk to this guy, see what we can do. He, he must allow us to do something. Come on, buddy. Okay, now I guess we just have to continue listening to this? Okay, I have an idea. Let's... No, wait. We don't want to look at this. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, hold on. Let me skip this. Great. Use... I don't think that will work. Give this to... This guy. Hey, would you like a, a very interesting periodical to read? I've got a magazine here. So you do. Uh, aren't you wondering how I met this woman? Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Uh, you know, this lecture bores me stiff. How about... Aren't you wondering how I met this woman? Let's just see if this works. Explore with some dialogue here. Nope. I've got other things to worry about. Uh, okay, that failed miserably. Okay, we're going to use the same opener, see if we can, uh, no thanks. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, wait. I think I need to go back and get a newspaper. I think I need a newspaper. All right, back on the street here. There's got to be a way to get newspaper. Bingo, bingo, bango. Old men can't resist reading the newspaper. My grandpa read the newspaper every single day. I don't think I've read a newspaper in my life. It's it's really it really is a dead a dead I don't know art form a dead thing. I mean you just read it all online these days for free. Never read a newspaper in my life. Although I do remember looking at classifieds and stuff like that. Um, are you wondering about the events of the day? Are you wondering about the events of the day, sir? Huh? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Well, how'd you like today's newspaper? Well, well, the late edition. Uh, I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? How derelict in your duty can you be? If somebody hands you a newspaper, you're like, well, I'm just uh, not going to do my job now. Okay, let's just pull some random levers here. One of these things has got to do something. Won't go any further. Okay, we'll push it. Blink. I don't know what that did. Blink. I don't know what that did. Blink. I don't know what that did. Pull this and... What? Something's glowing? I, I hear something in the background. Okay, what about this? Well, what about this? This is going to take a while, guys. Now we push a button? Does that do a thing? What? What is this? A ghost? <laughs> uh, was this supposed to come out later in her show? A freaking... Wow. Who paid to see this lecture? How is this a sold-out lecture? How many lectures have you been in... Have you been to in your life where they're like, Oh, I'm sorry, but this psychic... This, you know... Uh, uncertified psychics ramblings and drawings of Atlantis are just literally, you know, it's sold out. It, it, it's a huge, it draws in a huge crowd every single year, psychics do. I mean, they happen to be right about everything. Okay, here she comes. She's quite attractive, though. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. Oh, Indiana Jones, you incorrigible rascal, just riling people up. All right, so this was... Uh, a case where we used our fists, and then we used our wit. We fisted out the, uh, well, we didn't fist the guard. We beat him up with our fists. 
and then we, uh, uh, I don't know, outwitted the wily old man watching the uh, light controls. And... Okay. I, I don't know what he's looking for. No one's out here. He's just wandering around, checking stuff out. I guess her room was trashed? Oh, snap. It's that Nazi guy, and he's got a new coat. I'm going to rip that one off him, too. I'm just going to keep ripping coats off him until he has nothing left in this world, in this life. Herr Bauer, good news. Cable the Uberman in Berlin. Inform him that I have the samples we spoke of. It's trouble, guys. Look at that. Running that hand through that luscious head of German blonde. This man is evil. Evil, I tells you. <laughs> that second time, Kerner slipped away. Okay, so Kerner's the bad guy. What did a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you ever seen the newspaper? I don't know what that is. German wizard splits atom? Germans claim that a worldwide race has smashed the Iranian atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Uberman. Uberman, that's awesome. NASA's plans to harness new sources of energy. That is trouble, guys. If the Nazis had nuclear nuclear power, they probably... I don't know if they would have won necessarily. They definitely would have done a lot of damage before they lost the war. Uh, sounds okay. How about... I mean, what do we say? This is kind of a inconsequential thing. Inconsequential conversation at the moment. Practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Atlantis, 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 Atlantis. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. So I got into all that psychic crap. Yet you've been concealing important artifacts that you stole things from my expedition. Yeah, <laughs> no scientist steals from me. You've got dealings in the black market. You never published a word about your finds. Hmm. How about concealing important artifacts? I really don't see where this conversation is going, so it's making me hard to pick a direction. Humph. Oh man, Indy is so going to make love to her later in the game. He always does. His female companions. It's literally just a matter of time. Um, isn't it? Actually, well, he, he makes love to Elsa in The Last Crusade. I don't actually know if he does to the, the girls in the first and the second movie. But... So for those of you who don't know, Indiana Jones is kind of supposed to be like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas's take on James Bond. Originally, they wanted to make a Bond movie, and they weren't sure if they could get the rights. And that's when I think Lucas told Spielberg about his idea for Indiana Jones, and they kind of worked on it together and really developed the character. Uh, the Mysterious Medal, first mentioned by Plato, now placed in the medallion's mouth. Artifact stuff is happening because it's Indiana freaking Jones. My, the only thing that would have made this better is if the stuff we were going after wasn't Atlantis, but was somehow biblically related. Because if you look at Raiders of the Lost Ark and Last Crusade, they're both Nazis are the villains, and the artifacts are related to the Bible. Whether or not you believe in the Bible or anything, it is a very interesting mythology. And so I really always enjoy the connection between like the Bible uh, and Indiana Jones and the Nazis. It's, it's very interesting. Um, set of stories that comes out of that. Atlantis, eh, Atlantis is okay, but it feels like, you know, more more of like a ancient myth than uh, than something like you know uh, Jesus, which people still believe in. So, um, all right, let's see. Closer than Atlantis, that's for sure. I'm not interested in spiritual mumbo jumbo. That's what I feel like. That's what Doctor Jones would say. This man has a PhD, of course. He's uh, very rationally minded. Suppose I gave the Orchard come business. I don't even know what that word was. I've never seen that in my life. We have no idea where to find your mythical lost city. Yes. So tell me. Just tell me. How are we supposed to find this place? Shh. I'm getting something. <laughs> oh, here we go. Nur Absal speaks. He bids us to find the... What? A book. Yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine myth. Um, uh, if Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. That book is a legendary hoax. I think Plato just wanted to tell a tall tale. Sure. Doesn't re they all seem about equivalent. What if the Nazis already found a copy? You ever think of that? Well, anything is possible in this world, sweetheart. Uh, but Jones is a very skeptical guy. How did the Nazis get interested in Iceland? Why Iceland? Why not Florida? Where it's warm? Um, okay. Sure. 
she's just a little having her conversation. Now, was that did she actually get a psychic message from Nabu Rabu or whoever it was? Narab Ah, the Atlantis dude, or was she just faking it? I, like, was was she like playing a prank on Jones? I I don't know. I mean, I, I presume since it's a game, she actually does have real psychic powers in the context of this world. Everyone keeps like twirling their hair. The Nazi guy did it. She's doing it. This is like a Pantene Pro V commercial. Love a little tune in the background as we scoot from New York to Iceland. Indiana Jones is so great. It is hilarious how they took like 1930s serials, which were kind of cheesy, and they turned it into a movie franchise, which you might think was kind of cheesy. It's like some, you know, American professor who dresses up in a fedora with a whip and hunts Nazis. It may, it sounds a little ridiculous, but it came out so awesome. I don't know why it always worked. Look at the old dig site. Although, of course, the Crystal Skull was a freaking nightmare. Um, I don't really know anyone who really enjoys that movie. If you do, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with you on whether that is a good movie or not. But it was just so bad. It was just not a good movie, in my opinion. Dr. Dr. Bjorn. Or Bjorn. I don't know how to say that. Being Canadian, we don't have a lot of J's in our words. But Bjorn. I think it's Bjorn. I don't know why I'm saying it with that weird accent. Anyway, I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. Uh, we'll just let the dialogue go on here for a bit. Crystal Skull. Yeah, let's talk about that for just a second. Uh, Crystal Skull, it, it's hard to really compare it to the other Indiana Jones movies because it's so unlike the others. I mean, honestly, what made Indiana Jones great is that it was a movie based on these 1930s serials. You know, these like campy, you know, going into the Amazon, hunting artifacts with like Nazis on your tail kind of thing. I guess Nazis weren't in the serials in the 30s, but you know what I mean, bad guys and villains and stuff. Now, with Crystal Skull, I know George Lucas and Steven Spielberg said they wanted to modernize Indy and like rather than pay tribute to the serial genre, they wanted to pay tribute to the um, uh, 1950s sci-fi B-movie genre, which I'm sorry, but that does, doesn't make any sense. Um, it's, it was a nice idea, actually. Like, it's not like they were just, you know, these guys are really smart guys. They, they came up with a lot in their day. And they were, to their credit, trying to modernize Indiana Jones in an interesting way. But it doesn't work because they took the genre that defined Indiana Jones. They kind of pushed it out of the way. And instead, they put this kind of cheap sci-fi, weird, trans-dimensional alien stuff in there. Um, and on top of that... The villains weren't Nazis, which, I mean, that's a minor complaint. If if they had done the Soviets right, sure, it would have been okay. But there was a huge reliance on computer effects. And, like, you know, there's scenes where, like, Shia LaBeouf is swinging through the jungle with an army of monkeys. Indiana Jones has always had some kind of, like, dark comedy moments in it. Like that, that scene where that guy comes out to uh, sword fight Indiana Jones. And he's swinging his sword all over the place, and Indy just can't be bothered. So he takes his gun out and shoots him. Or like when Indy's trying to sneak up uh, onto the uh, Nazi plane in Raiders of the Lost Ark and that guy behind him sees him. He's like, hey. And then Indy like, has like a reluctant look and he like goes back down the plane to fight the guy. Like there are some funny, dark, humorous comedy moments in the Indiana Jones series. Of course, they belong in the movies. I think the monkey thing was just over the top and it was indicative of the type of over the topness that was problematic in Indiana Jones. Plus then you had his friend like Mac who was constantly switching sides. It just didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, it, there was so many problems with that film. Unfortunately, I was kind of looking forward to a new Indiana Jones movie. Uh, but yeah. And another thing that I've noticed happens as directors get older is they become less risky and they start to want to make every movie family friendly. I don't know if this is because they have kids or whatnot, but if you look at the old Indiana Jones movies, there's blood. He's, he literally shoots people. Indiana Jones is a murderer. I love Indy, but he murders people. He straight up shoots them. And there's blood and guts flying everywhere when he does. Now, in Crystal Skull, people get killed. There isn't an ounce of blood, and everything is off camera. And Indy doesn't really directly kill people as much as he used to. And it's one of those things where it's like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas, they got grandkids now. They want them to watch movies. But, you know, I'm sorry, but it it just doesn't do it. Uh, and so 
I, and I've noticed this about a lot of actors. Like Eddie Murphy was so raunchy back in the day, but you watch some of his modern stuff and it's like not, not even PG rated. It's like G rated these days compared to what he used to do. If you ever watch like Eddie Murphy, I think Delirious, his like original, uh, you know, stand up stuff. It was raunchy, man, but they like PG ified it. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's a minor complaint of mine. Well, not even a minor, but it's sort of a complaint of what happens invariably as people get older is they try and make things kids friendly because they have families and stuff. And sometimes it's not good for the story. So yeah. Hey, th those are Jay's quote unquote rambles about Indiana Jones and the movie industry. Not that you asked. All right. So let's get out of here. We now have the option of going to the Azores or Tikal. I'm sorry, I kind of like didn't pay attention to that. Oops, no, 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 don't restart. I didn't pay attention to that whole dialogue with the doctor there. Uh, maybe I should have. I definitely will start paying attention to things in the game a little bit more. Uh, one thing I find with these games, or with this game, is it seems to have a lot of dialogue, and I don't want to just be reading the dialogue off the screen the whole time. I feel like that might make for slightly boring commentary, but I will start paying a little more attention to things. One thing that I'm immediately noticing, by the way, before we go to Tikal, is that with some adventure games, like Sierra Adventure Games, if I don't have a walkthrough beside me, I can't make any progress. I've actually made a ton of progress in this game so far, and I've only like looked up one or two minor things as I've been going. And this makes me feel like this would have been an adventure game I would have loved to have as a kid because I could have actually made progress. It would have been really interesting. So yeah, so far, I'm giving two thumbs up to Indiana Jones. I haven't even gotten that far in the game. Maybe my opinion will change. What the hell is that thing? Okay, let's enter the jungle and see what we've got. All right, let's see if we can figure out our way through this jungle. What the hell is that thing? Jungle rodent. Can we talk to it? That'd be freakish if we could talk. Nope. Doesn't even give me the option. I guess all I can do is look at it. Um, that was weird. <laughs> Wait, I walked into the dark jungle path, and I came out right over here. Okay. So, wait, where am I trying to go? Indiana Jones is... Oh, here we go. Now we'll go into this path. Come out there. Okay. What about this one? What the... I'm in like a weird jungle maze. Well, that was simple. Um, a giant anaconda. Okay, I know what we can do here. Let's use our whip on the anaconda. Whoosh! I think we just pissed it off. <laughs> Jeez, if your snake big enough to be uh, whip proof, it's pretty remarkable. Okay, I got an idea. We're going to sacrifice our little buddy here. Wait, now we're going to... Wait, no, not exit. No, go back into the jungle. I like how she's just waiting here. She's like, Indy, can we hurry this up? Did not bring my jungle book, my jungle boots. Let's whip this. The critter's too far away. I'll walk over there and whip him good. It's the 80s, right? Whip things. Use whip on the rodent. Yeah, crack! Get in there, little buddy! Oh, uh, we're sending... That is a huge rodent, by the way. That's not, like, a, a, a small thing. It is a huge rodent. We... Oh my god, we send it to its death over a cliff. Good old Mother Nature. Yep, we... Not only did we kill that rodent, we probably killed the snake, too. Um, so, good... Good job, Dr. Jones. Um... I guess now we'll just climb the tree and do that. That's a thing that we can do. Wow, some bridge. Hi, Indy. What the? Who's waiting for me in the... What? What? Hello. How did you get over here? What a jip. Indiana Jones went to all this trouble. Well, you were off bushwhacking. I found a path. Um, hardy har har. I guess they had to get her over here in the game and they didn't want to have her go through all that stuff. So they just came up with this uh, interesting little novelty way of getting her over here. We better find Sternhart. Who the hell is Sternhart? Damn it, why didn't I pay attention? Okay. Uh, what? Wait, could I have done this from the beginning? Oh man. <laughs> Wait, did I even need to go in the jungle? Alrighty. 
Well, we're now gonna walk up to the temple, begging your pardon. You can't go in there. The temple isn't safe. Okay, can I help you with something? Postcards? Replicas of the temple? I feel like this guy's a bit of a jerk. Indiana Jones runs up against his fair share of jerks in his line of uh, work, let me tell you that. So, no thanks, Mr. Dot Dot Dot. Thanks, we just like to look around. What is this guy's name? Uh, Charles Sternhardt, PhD, independent thinker, researcher, and merchant. Ah, he's a business PhD. Or a business academic. What can you tell us about Plato's Lost Dialogue? How about that? Let's get this guy to actually help us. I think he was the one we were looking for anyway. I'm the one who translated it. I can tell you that. I'd worry you were here to steal my last copy. But someone called Mr. Smith beat you to it. Oh, damn it. I actually was here to steal your last copy. In case you can't tell. Okay, is Mr. Smith a, a seductively blonde-looking German man? With uh, a lot of stolen artifacts kicking around. German accent pistol. Could have taken all my souvenirs. He only wanted the lost dialogue. Of all the things he wanted, he only wanted the priceless artifact. And not this junk. Go figure. Um, hoping to find some evidence for Atlantis. Alright, lay it on me, big boy. Tell me where to go and I will go. Evidence is easy. You're surrounded by it. Proof. Now that's hard. What? What jibber-jabber can you tell us about the temple? Okay, how about this? Rumors have it that the temple was built by survivors of Atlantis. Now, if you came from a hyper-advanced civilization that had, like, freaking jets, and you literally just built a stone pyramid, I mean, it's impressive, but no electricity, no jet engines. Kind of a disappointment. It'd be like if... if you know, there were survive if we had like an apocalypse and people survived in our society and they went and built like sand castles. They're like, yeah. Or I mean I guess it would be like if they built stone temples, whatever. Uh, anyway, why aren't we allowed inside? Uh yeah, let me inside. Uh, how do I know you aren't a pair of silly tourists? I think we should go the fists route here. I think we're done talking. We need to just beat the crap out of this guy. You guys remember, Indiana Jones had so many, like, great lines when he was beating people up. Um, he had, like, no ticket when he threw that guy off the, uh, off the, the air blimp or whatever. Uh, we need some of those in these games. We need, we need a, a no ticket scene. I'm Dr. Indiana Jones, that's probably enough. Sure. I'll reveal myself. Dr. Jones! Indiana? Sounds like the name of one of your states. Or possibly a cat. Actually, it was the name of a dog. Sophia! <laughs> okay. Let's, let, let me through. <laughs> I'd really like to explore the temple. Come on. What's interesting about this game is, unlike some other adventure games, I'm not doing a lot of puzzle solving. It's very dialogue focused. Like, it's not letting me skip a beat. I like ha literally have to click, can I enter the temple? And then I'd really like to enter, and then please let me enter, and then, come on, seriously, can I enter? Like, it's making me go through the paces. Uh, I don't know the title. Title! Bach! Obviously, I'm not serious about this. Dude, you have the only copy of the book! How am I supposed to know the title? Oh, I know! How about this bird that's hanging around up here? Let's see if he's got some things to tell you. Title. Democrates, rack. A friend of Socrates, rack. Rack. Easy, see? There's always a solution. There's always a little sneaky bird listening to things. Yeah, like if you had the only copy of a book, why would you... <laughs> why would you force other people to know the title before you allow them to enter the temple? You fool. About exploring the temple. It's time you let me in, sir. Name of the last dialogue. How about Hermocrates? That's it! That's it! Brock! <laughs> like, I didn't know it two seconds ago, and now I just came up with it, and that's impressive enough. If only knowing the titles of books was actually that useful in your day-to-day -day life. I don't trust this guy, Indy. I know what you mean. We might have to kill him. <laughs> Burn the body. Here we are. See what you can do. Um, okay. Let's uh, look at these things. 
I water, water, water and life. Wait, look. Water and life. Okay. They, they, are they all just water and life? Okay. Can we use these things? Uh... Wait. What did that just say? Years of tarnish have gummed it all up. So there is something there. Don't mind me. I'm uh, just gonna go out here and uh, wait for me, old bean. Oh crap! I wanted to steal your stuff. Wait, can I can I take take your stuff anyway? Pick up kerosene lamp. Sorry, old chum. That lamp's part of my shop. I can't let you have it. Okay. We need to find a way to distract him. I have a feeling that Sophia can do it. Or maybe we should just split up. If if Sophia could steal the lamp, is there any way to tell her steal lamp? Let's talk to Sophia over here. Can I talk to you, Sophia? Over here, privately. Away from Admiral Dork. Dork Pants. What's up? Um, let's see. Keep him occupied. Flirt with him. Do whatever you gotta do. Use your womanly wiles. Or just ask him a series of intricately academic questions. Alright, good job, Sophia. The art of the conversation is with you. Now, time to rob this guy blind. We're gonna take his most valuable asset, a kerosene lamp. It's pretty sad when that's like the, the top tier of your store. A kerosene lamp. Okay. Back into the temple. The one thing I will say about this game, the graphics are great, the gameplay is pretty good, but the music leaves a little something to be desired. So you took my lamp, eh? I hope you know what you're doing. Wait, he he didn't want me to take the lamp, I took it, and he clearly notices I took it, and he's like, yeah, well, you, you already got it. Uh, filled with kerosene. Open... No, wait. Open the lamp and use the lamp on that. Look! The kerosene ate away the tarnish. Remarkable! <laughs> We're just desecrating artifacts in front of this guy who spent his whole life studying them. And he's like, wow! Marvelous! You've taken some of the stuff. The hell is this thing? Alright, what do you do? Here, Here's a bit of trivia. What do you do? When you find some kind of weird snake thing in the temple, why well, you use it on a weird elephant looking thing in a temple. It fits perfectly. Now it looks like a kind of elephant. Good job, old chap. Uh, now we're gonna, I don't know, pull on this. It's funny that you had to like steal this thing to put in the elephant, when like if there is a lever in here, couldn't you just have used like a piece of wood or something? Why did it have to be this intricately shaped thing? So it's actually pretty bad security when literally it's just a lever that uh, I won't go any farther. Use. That doesn't work. Oh, wait. Open. Wait, close. Wait, we're supposed to do something to this totally. There we go. Click. Look at that. Astonishing. Indiana Jones is great at solving these old historical puzzles. Bless my soul, the tomb of an Atlantean king. Uh, here's a small stone with a stone disc with the image of land and sea engraved on it. I do believe it's a world stone. Probably something to do with Atlantis. At last, I have the thing. Wait, he's walking away at a brisk pace. Wait! And he walked into a door in the wall. Oh no, he got away. Wait. Not necessarily. We could, we could follow him. I guess, hold on. I guess I'll take the little shiny thing here first, but... He <laughs> Imagine you were like in an argument with somebody and they walked into another room and you're like, oh no, they got away. Like literally just follow him. Open the secret door. It won't budge. Okay. I mean, can we like run around the backside of the temple? He's only human. Surely we could maybe outrun him. I think in the context of the game, he's just gone. Like, oh man, he walked into another room. He got away. 
Um, I think that's it. I think, I think, yo, we, we've done everything we can in the jungle here. These levels are quite small, actually. Uh, I do like how there's a lot of them, and there's some interesting things to talk to people about, but the game is very focused on dialogue, and the levels are actually quite small. Let's find the airport. Do, 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 do. Now, we're supposed to go back to Iceland, but I think i got to wrap it up here because we've been going on for quite a while. So let's go to Azores just to see something a little different, and we'll end on this while I wrap some things up. Before I do get into my thoughts on this game, one thing I did want to mention that I thought was so cool is that I mean, I do like this game. Um, this is this is a neat game. They were actually supposed to make a sequel to this game. And the sequel is actually going to take place post-World War II when uh, some ragtag Nazis, some Nazi survivors, were trying to use the Philosopher's Stone to resurrect Adolf Hitler. Which I thought was so cool. I mean, most Indiana Jones movies where he's fighting Nazis take place before World War II. The idea of having one after, and they're still after these artifacts, I thought that would be pretty cool. I mean, that would make a cool movie, I think. Uh, it's kind of too late to do it now, because Harrison Ford is getting uh, a little old. But nonetheless, uh, you know, again, I've already said very clearly that I, I think uh, Indiana Jones fighting the Nazis is sort of his, his classic indie and the, the best Indiana Jones stories come out of that. So it's actually really neat to have the idea of Indiana Jones fighting Nazis after the war. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I think today we've learned that it is possible to make a fun and interesting Indiana Jones movie or movie game. Uh, I, I actually haven't played too many other Indiana Jones games, although I know there's a handful on the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and such that are just plain action games. And they're not terribly good games. They're decent, but they're not, like, amazing. Uh, do you have a bathroom there that I can use? I do like the fact that there is a little more emphasis on dialogue here. I do, though, kind of find there's a little bit too much dialogue here. Although maybe it's just because I'm not... You know, when I'm doing a Let's Play, I kind of want a bit more action so I can talk over the game with dialogue. I feel bad every time I talk over it because I'm skipping story. But if I just literally read dialogue... I don't know if it makes super interesting, you know, commentary anyway. So, you know, like, what do I think about this game? Like, the pros are, it is a Indiana Jones, it is a new Indiana Jones story. If you are interested in this so far, I think you should go check this game out. And, you know, you can use this video to kind of get to the point where I got to, but then carry forward, my friends. Um, I This is one of the few adventure games that I think you could make significant progress on, having never looked up a walkthrough. I mean, I personally find for a lot of adventure games, if you don't want to be at it all day, every day, for weeks at a time, you might have to look up a walkthrough, because these games can be quite challenging, like very, very challenging and obscure. This game I don't think is. And I do like the idea, we haven't really encountered too much of it, the alternative paths that we can take. I mean, the first level where we rescued, rescued, where we met her, there are different ways we could have got in the building. I wish there was more of that in the game, but I appreciate that they even did it. And I think that for its time, that was a pretty cool idea. So, you know, I mean, the cons are heavy emphasis on dialogue. I wish there was a little less of that, but you know, it is what it is. Is this a game you should check out before you die? I definitely say, I think this is a, ah. you know what? I was going to say yes, but I know that because action or adventure games aren't absolutely everyone's cup of tea, I'll give this one a solid maybe, but leaning towards yes. I think this is a great game, a uh, very interesting game. Um, and, you know, at the very least, it, it's a fun game to visit and check out. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video today. Anyway, I won't overstay my welcome any further because it looks like we're at an impasse. I don't know how to get in here. Why well, just make out instead? That's Indy's go-to. We can walk a little closer to her. We're now kind of like standing in her. He's kind of like rubbing his butt up against her awkwardly. She's like, uh, no means no, Indy. I am a professional psychic here. Let's just keep our mind on the job. Sorry, I, uh... Just have my shirt unbuttoned and everything. I totally thought we were going to make out. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and me being kind of stupid during it. Uh, if you have, go ahead, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'll be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game, and you don't want to miss out on that. And until next time, my friends, keep on hunting down those artifacts and keep them out of the hands of Nazis. Because those are the worst kinds of people. You don't want them getting supernatural powers. That would just be pretty awful. Anyway, guys, until next time, take care of yourselves. Peace. You're a psychic, right? Tell me the truth. Are they going to make a really crappy movie about me in about 20 years? Because if so, I want out right now. <laughs>